This is a video that has been a long time coming. My wife wanted me to watch Gilmore Girls, and that is not something that I would ever normally partake in. Let's fast forward to the mid-2000s. I was in high school, and my buddy Kenny at the time, he had a couple of sisters, and uh, our other friend Matt had two sisters, Kenny had two sisters too, now that I think about it. Anyway, I remember in high school, they would watch Gilmore Girls when it was brand new TV, and they would talk about it all the time. And I was more watching Cheers and Seinfeld reruns with my brother. So that wasn't really something that I was experiencing firsthand as it happened. And with the glory of the modern era you could watch a whole series all in one. I was talking to my wife yesterday about another program that we are currently in the midst of watching and how I watched that show when it was brand new. But if you kind of missed some of it, that was it because they didn't release to DVD or streaming like they do now in the early 2000s. So Gilmore Girls, the characters that I always remember... I always remember the dad, Richard Herman, because I grew up watching Richie Rich with Macaulay Culkin. This is my childhood copy. But Richard Herman played the dad in Gilmore Girls. And then another one of my favorites, he is the main vampire in The Lost Boys, Kiefer Sutherland. So I kind of remember him, and I always loved him. Richard Herman as an actor, or is it, damn it, it's Edward Herman, and now I don't want to go back and record it, because I've already recorded two minutes in, is it, hang on, this is what happens when you don't make notes, this is just, we're, we're putting it out there with no notes, nothing, you can correct me in the comments, I don't want to look it up, wait, does it say here, we're reading in real time. This is like live AM radio, just like my Tim Conway shirt that I'm wearing. We're doing it live, pulling back the curtain. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I remember the dad, Richard on the show, Ed in real life, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, I always remember him. We're filling up space here. And then I always remember Alexis Blydell, Bladell, I don't know how you pronounce it. I always remember her and seeing this movie in theaters with my cousin when I was in high school and swooning over the main female lead. Great movie, by the way. I love these types of movies where there's like age defying kind of like, you know, Tuck Everlasting. I think it was originally a book, but that's besides the point. I believe this was her first foray into acting. So, you know, I like visual aids and I don't have a DVD box set of the Gilmore Girls. So I'm pulling things in that I have handy. And then shortly after the revival, which maybe we'll talk about here, maybe we won't. I don't know. I bought my wife this book for her birthday, the Lauren Graham kind of bio book. And in that title, it says, Talking as fast as I can from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and everything in between. And I think she got this in 2016. 2016. So this would have been right after the revival because I believe the revival was 2015. And she has yet to read it. So this is a long introduction. All that to say, she, the a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a couple of months ago now, she was talking, watching, I come home from work and on YouTube she was watching clips of Gilmore Girls and I said to her isn't that show on Netflix and she's like I don't know but I'm kind of like analyzing the Luke and Lorelai relationship and I said you know what I got nothing but time because my job is slow right now let's watch it and we found it on Netflix and we started watching it and posting about it on social media and all these friends Kathleen huge shout out and my buddy Seth's wife, Katie, huge shout out. They were like, oh my gosh, this is our favorite show. We watch it all the time. And we started watching it. And just a couple of days ago, we finished it. So my wife had watched it, a similar situation with other shows. You know, it's in syndication. You're watching it live. Maybe you miss some and you kind of fall away. And then it's hard to watch in the early 2000s. 
unless you had TiVo or were recording it on VHS because they didn't really put out box sets back then and there was no streaming. So, you know, we watched the whole thing in consecutive order and it took us several weeks and I enjoyed it immensely. I love the characters. I love the whole stars, hollow world, Amy Sherman Palladino and Daniel Palladino. I really like their writing style and I've kind of dipped my feet into the water of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, but I never finished it, but I did enjoy what I saw. So, you know, coming from a world where I mostly watch shows like Everybody Loves Raymond and Seinfeld, those were like my go-to shows back in the mid 2000s. Um, I always kind of thought in my mind this was like a chick show, but you know what? It was very enjoyable and I really liked the pop culture and the very fast talking and the character development. You kind of fell in love with the characters, Richard, Emily, Luke, you know, Lorelai, Rory, the whole, the whole gang. And, and even like, you know, people kind of, my wife kind of did more research and reading blogs and whatnot. People kind of don't like the April character, but I find that whole subplot kind of enduring and I thought it was nice. And so overall, and then, you know, the other thing too, because of, I guess I want to say this from like a new person's perspective. So maybe if you're clicking around online and you're just like, let's, we've loved the show and we talk about the show. Here's a guy that just watched it for the first time here in 2023. Um, it was a window to my past as well, because of like, I was the age of kind of the, of the Rory character at the time. And you're still kind of in this age with not as much technology. It's a simpler time. And it reminded me of my high school years. And now we just have such a saturation of technology and distractions. And then, you know, the whole movie or the television show is set in like this peaceful town, which is obviously on a Burbank back lot. But, you know, we get the picture, right? You kind of long for this small town vibe where everybody knows your name, like cheers, you know, everyone wants this sense of community. So I feel like this, this show, people kind of at least... I see why people like it because there is kind of this whole community vibe about the whole program and you know people want that and I think that's very appealing and then like the relationships right it's like it drove me absolutely nuts and my wife and I used to always say this is a show about women making bad decisions with men but you know you get so invested in the show and it's kind of like a soap opera all these love triangles going on but not really I mean it's not a soap opera but you know you kind of get where I'm coming from right so and again, I'm all over the place because I didn't take any notes or anything. I'm just kind of speaking with what's coming to mind as a, as I talk about it. Um, it just, um, you watch that show and you felt good. And you want, and even though it ended and like the last season wasn't written by the original writing team, I still like left wanting, wanting more. And then the same thing with the revival. Like I know that people kind of panned it. A lot of people didn't like it when it came out. I really enjoyed it. And it made me want to find out what the next chapter was and to me that is good writing and that's my barometer of ratings if it makes me laugh or if it makes me cry and it's captivating my attention I'm gonna want to keep going and there is another show that we tried to get into after this because it's of a similar time period we tried to get into Dawson's Creek and it just wasn't for me different writing style more soap opera more crass I don't know if I could say yeah maybe it was more crass but it it just it didn't have it didn't have the connection that the characters of Gilmore Girls had for me and I could see why this show is very special in a lot of people's lives because you really do fall in love with the characters and their stories and then like when when Richard's character how they kind of honored him in the revival after he really died in real life it just brought tears to my eyes and it's just you can see that even the, the writers put a lot of themselves into the characters and you it's just so good so i am gonna go even though like you know some of the episodes were kind of eh, but the majority i'm going five out of five on gilmore girls i really liked it i really enjoyed it um i'm not gonna get into plot lines and storylines there's just too many characters i love the kirk character uh but as a whole, a cumulative view of the whole series, all seven seasons plus the revival, it was enjoyable. And I liked the whole parent-child relationship and their closeness of mother and daughter. And 
even Lorelai's contention with her parents, but then there was still a caring, loving relationship that was behind all of that. Yes, it was contentious at times, but it was real. And I think that's another reason that I like this show. It's like, it's not a perfect show. There's not this like, you know, people make bad decisions sometimes. And Lorelai and Rory were imperfect people making decisions that maybe a real life person would have made. It's like, everyone was screaming at the TV like, oh, like, why didn't she just stick with Luke from the beginning? And she's going on all, you know, but that's reality sometimes. So that's my comments on Gilmore Girls. And if you haven't watched it, check it out. I've recommended it to a few people and they have started watching it and they have commented back to me that they have also enjoyed it. And if you are a Gilmore Girls veteran and you just wanted to hear a new guy's perspective, maybe you found this video and you watched it and I would love to hear what you have to say as well. Until next time, we will see you then.